What's going on, guys? This is Tyler from Division One Trading. It's just a quick Saturday going over some price action that we saw this week and just wanted to share a couple things with you guys. So one of the main things that we saw this week or that we were looking at was this bullish order block on the daily chart. So we're looking at this range between this low and this high. Now, anytime that I'm looking at an order block, I know that, yes, support should be there, but I always mark the low because I know that my hypothetical stop said that I, I was entering just on the order block. That's kind of where it would be. And then I'll mark 50%. So in the second here, I'm just kind of measuring that out. And so I always drag it with a fib and then I'll just put uh, right there 50% and I'll make it to where you guys can differentiate it. It's the little dashed line. So now we have an understanding on our four hour or daily order block. Um, what price is likely to do. Now, anytime we have an order block, for example, this bullish order block that we're talking about here. So, let me, so obviously this order block is represented as here. And we have this small wick that kind of reaches uh, up. Now, this is the first level that's sensitive. I don't usually look at the wick. I generally just look at the body. It's going to be more sensitive. Um, and it's it's just too much to try to start looking for a reversal there. So what you want to see is, right, let's start off like as if we're right here. You want to see that order block get triggered. You want to see it trade above, right, the wick. The wick is going to be the trigger. Like I said, I don't really use it for support, but I want to see that wick be taken out. So right there, you can see it's tagged. Once it tags that wick, my eyes immediately go back to that 50% and the order block right there. That's where I want to see that support come in now. So, and you can see we start pulling back and we end up coming right to the 50, which is great. That was a, a perfect little tap right there. And that's where we're going to take it off from. So we had that daily order block and you can see right here, this was Wednesday and this is Eastern time at 12 and one o'clock. So right there at one, it drove down into 50% of that order block you can see here. Now, just a typical order block entry, just to show you, um, if we were just trading this blindly, we would trade it like this. This would be our one-to-one. -one, and then obviously everything above that would be profit, but that's how we understand that or how you'd understand that order block. And again, it formed here. Let me make that uh, a little easier to understand, right? It opened here and closed here. So this is that four hour order block. That's what it looks like, right? And then remember we had that uh, that wick right here. And I'll just leave that as like, right? right? So this, is, this was our candle. Now, so we have candle wick. It trades back into the order block 50%, starts to build off of it. Now, what I wanna talk about is well, first, we'll just start with a simple setup. The simple setup is once it trades to that 50, remember I was saying just a hypothetical, we would buy that. Now, obviously, if we're trading it, we wouldn't have too much confidence in it. We would want to see that being respected. So right here, we're, uh, we're basically mirroring what we just saw. So we just saw a bullish order block on the daily. Now we're on the one hour and we'd be studying this bullish order block here. And again, we would do the same thing. We have the high of that order block. We have the low where the stop should be, and we have 50%. Now, like I said, if we're just buying this blindly, how would this setup look? Well, let me take this off first. If we're just buying it um, based off of the support, we'd be buying right here at 50%. We'd put our stop right there under the low of the order block, or to get confluence with the daily chart a lot of times, Instead of putting my stop in a situation like this, I'll just put it at that mean threshold right there from the daily, if it's that close. And then obviously we'd be looking for about a three to one. So that's just your basic order block injury. And you even had, um, if we're calling this an order block, we even had a propulsion block right here where it traded into it and then back out again. And we can measure 50% of that propulsion block as well. And it should give us a pretty good setup. Um, so that's good there. What I really wanted to show you, and I've covered this before and it is a little more advanced, but I just wanted to show you a quick reaper. So again, 
a reaper is a fair value gap. It's a it's just a breaker that has a fair value gap in the breaker leg. Now it it's just a normal breaker, but the way that a breaker sets up, it always has to fail on both sides. So for example, I always want to see um, in this example, say it gives us a bearish breaker. We take some kind of high and then some kind of low. Then we would be expecting bearish prices, right? We'd be expecting it to come back into that bearish breaker. Now, if it comes back into the bearish breaker and fails, now we've broken to the other side, right? We had a low, a high, a lower low. So now we shifted market structure to the low, which created our breaker, our bearish breaker, but then we failed. So then we shifted again, we made a higher, uh, a higher high now. So we've shifted the market structure back to the upside. And now this becomes a bullish breaker, right? We'd wanna see it trade back into it and go bullish. So the basis of the Reaper is just a breaker, but you wanna see another breaker form first, right? That is important. So I want you to see right here, Price is taken out right here by this high. And I'm just leaving that daily order block in there for extra confluence. So right here, you can see we run above this high. Looks like uh, five o'clock, so late London session. We run above the high, and then we turn and we run above this low. Now, this point, this point here is going to be pretty important. So <clears throat> when we run this low, yes, we've now created a bearish breaker. So this is our liquidity. We run the high, we run the low. And so we're getting this high and low and the breaker grabs it. So once we grab this high, we take it out there in London, we grab this low. This low gets defended. It gets defended by this mean threshold right here, right? That's 50% of the order block. It traded to it. And when it comes back to it, it takes liquidity but it fails to go lower. So they're trying to get really as close to they can, as close as they can to this liquidity, but they never actually run the low. So that's pretty significant. They're protecting this low. So now once it trades up and it trades down, we have a bearish breaker. So we would typically be looking to take a short right here. So as it trades, up and then down through it, right? We took this high here and this low. So now we would be expecting it to trade back up into here and go short. Now, obviously we can tell that that fails. Let's just go look at it on like a 15 minute chart. So you can see it trades through it. It comes back and immediately fails. You see that one candle right there? Boom, fails immediately. You would have been trading the breaker. Now it uses the inverse side. So instead of Going like this, how it should have, should have traded up to that high, stop on the high, down to the low, stop on the low, traded back up into the breaker, and then sold off, right? It didn't do that. It failed, which is a good thing if we would want to look for our Reaper position. Now, in the upswing, right, the, the level that took this liquidity high, if there is a fair value gap here, which there is, that can be used as our Reaper gap. Let me make this just a little easier to see. So right here is our Reaper gap. And remember, this is all on top of this daily order block that we covered. Now with the Reaper gap, just like most of the things that we use in price action trading, we cut it in half. So right here, it didn't have to be absolutely perfect, but definitely make sure it's pretty close. So you can see right there where the breaker fails, we had that first pass, it traded to the high and failed. This still came to the low and bought up. Now with the Reaper setup, we want the second pass. So right here, see the, the Reaper had failed at this candle that 930 candle traded right through the high and the breaker was done. Then right here, this 945 candle and further traded back down. That's just a, a classic optimal trade entry right there. 
from this low to this high. Now, that was that first pass. It left it alone. And now as it comes into the Reaper for the second pass, I want you to see how, how accurate this is. It comes right to the Reaper. And then not immediately, but after about two hours of trading in here, we leave the consolidation, which again is sponsored by this daily order block right here. They grabbed the mean threshold. They failed to take it lower. So what does that likely mean that these two lows are here? They're likely going to be a failure swing. So if this is going to be a failure swing, then it's likely that we're anchoring here to trade higher. And again, just going back to that Reaper, that's what it would look like there on the one hour. And you can see they come back into it super heavy, super heavy right there. And it trades away. And you can see on the one hour chart, um, the body stay pretty close to that 50%. Now, one thing I would add, uh, if you are a little advanced, um, you can throw this in there. If you have an inverted fair value gap uh, set up, you can feel free to take that. It's just going to add confluence to the setup. It's not going to um, do anything magical. It's not like you know, secret sauce, but it is a great confluence to add to this setup. And when you can find them together, it's creating more of like this balanced price range, which can be traded super effectively. We just wanted to hop on here and cover some of that. And you can see how it traded back at that daily order block as well. But appreciate you guys watching this video. Make sure you comment if you have any questions. And make sure you join our free Telegram group. It's not going to be open too much longer, but it's definitely still open. So make sure you get in there, come learn something, come trade live with us. And y'all have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.